Hi everyone, it's Matt here from the Matt the XZY YouTube channel and I haven't made a video because I thought I would wait until I've made something a little bit different. Um, up until now it's just been me showing you a few things in Arduino, trying to make some Morse code beacons. Uh, originally the idea I had for a beacon was one that could be solar powered and work independently without any intervention like needing to have its battery charged and whatnot. And I think I may have come up with something. Uh, just a preface, I'm not an electronics engineer, nor am I a licensed radio amateur, so I don't actually broadcast any Morse code. I just find the whole thing uh, quite interesting. So, as you might have noticed, this is wrapped in uh, a heat reflective sort of a foil. Uh, that's because I'm trying to get it to stay in the sun all day without getting too hot. You might notice, uh, in addition to the antenna connector for the pixie transmitter there's also another antenna uh, coming out and that's for UHF and I'll get to that in a moment and that also has something to do with these lights flashing as well so what this beacon does uh, it doesn't only just run to schedule sending out Morse code it also tells me a little bit of telemetry information it tells me the state of charge of its battery and it tells me what temperature the battery is at because we don't want lithium ion batteries getting too hot and it does that at a certain time every hour but it all makes sense in a moment so stay tuned so taking this open we'll start with what's under the lid first and we'll work our way down as far as parts go so inside here we have the UHF transmitter module if you want to play around with these modules, I'd suggest you go for a super heterodyne model, not the uh, super regenerative model. They're only about 50 cents a dollar more expensive, but they're worth it. Uh, a separate US micro USB charging port. Uh, buried under here, there's a separate protective charging circuit for 3.7 volt lithiums. And that's one of these little fellas here, one of these little circuits there. This diode here I'm using a IN5822 that's to make sure that power from the solar panel only goes one way and so that the battery doesn't discharge into it over night time. I've found that these these bigger fatter diodes somewhat, have somewhat less of a voltage drop across them so I think they're more suitable for solar than say run-of-the-mill IN4007s but they would probably work just the, just the same. So information is coming from the Arduino going over to here and power from the solar panel which is I think 180 milliamps at 5 volts is coming down to charge the battery so you're probably wondering well if we're getting this information out how the heck are we reading it uh, what I've done is I've made my own little custom receiver I'll show you inside that right now so inside here there's another Arduino Nano uh, right there I'll get a nice close focus so you can see inside here so there's an Arduino Nano there there's the UHF receiver down there for 433 megahertz it's working off an old phone battery with another uh, 5 volt boost circuit on off switch and a little beeper so we'll turn that on has a little start up so 3.82 volts 21 degrees. Now you might notice that the readings bounce around a little bit. So oh, see 3.9. That's because the um, Arduino is doing floating point math conversions to get these readings. And I've noticed that the higher of the readings is usually the most accurate. So it's probably between 3.85 and 3.9. It's so it's not especially accurate, but it's more than accurate enough to infer the voltage of that battery well this is where the fun begins isn't it <laughs> so we'll start top to bottom so here's the real-time clock it's important for everything it's pretty much the most well not the most important they're all important as each other but it's a very important aspect it runs the schedule of when it beeps out its voltage and temperatures and it also runs the schedule to send out your Morse code message if you're so inclined here we have a 18650 cell which is a good quality cell it has its own built-in charge protection uh, 
overcharging protections and under voltage protections and all of that jazz. There's a 5 volt boost circuit here and that's connected in parallel to a 12 volt boost circuit. Okay, so this one's powering the Pixie circuit and this one here is powering the Arduino. And depending on what schedule you might like to program in, it turns on this the Pixie transmitter via a logic level logic level MOSFET. This is a P40NF10L. This is the one I found that goes pretty good. And if you may have well, I don't know if you watched my last video, but I had some trouble getting the MOSFET to work because the Pixie would turn on even when the MOSFET wasn't getting a signal from the Arduino. That was because there is a, a ground loop happening between my transistor here. You might remember one of these. There was a ground loop occurring between the collector of the transistor and I th uh, gate drain source and the drain or the source of the MOSFET. And I fixed that by just simply connecting the collector of the transistor uh, with a disk capacitor to the ground of the Arduino. Uh, when I first put this together, I noticed that power was draining fairly quickly. Like I could leave it for a day or two and it would already be drained. And I'd be going, man, what the hell, what, you know, what, what's this all about? What was happening was, even though Arduinos don't you much use much power, it was still drawing 22 milliamps. I found a, a library for the Arduino IDE called, uh, they're from an outfit called Rocketstream. It's just a, I forget the exact name, but it's just a sleep library. And I've put that little splice of code in that puts the Arduino into a deep sleep when it's not doing anything. So if it's not sending out telemetry or it's not sending out Morse code, it goes into a deep sleep. Instead of drawing about 22, 25 milliamps, not doing anything, the whole thing only now draws two milliamps. So it only needs a couple of hours of sunlight a day to keep everything running, which I thought was pretty cool. So we'll get down now to the sensors that are doing this telemetry. I just like using the word telemetry, you may have noticed. So uh, glued to the battery casing here is just a little LM35 temperature sensor. And reading the voltage is just a voltage sensing module, which is really just two resistors working as a voltage divider. So it's nothing really special, and I probably could have just made that myself. But since we're connecting up power to one of the Arduino's analog in ports, analog in pins, I thought it might be best just to use a module instead of risk blowing it up and doing bad naughty things like that. So I've had this running continuously for about, I think, two weeks now. And the power drain has never gone below around 3.6 or 3.5 volts. The other thing is, if you're going to make one of these and you have the idea of leaving it somewhere, I'd advise against it because, you know, uh, if someone came across this and it looks a little bit suspicious, doesn't it? It almost, well, it's not a bomb. You and I know it's not a bomb. But if Mr. Joe Public came along and he saw this sitting in the middle of nowhere with wires coming out of it, he's probably going to call the cops. So, again, this is just a proof of concept. Like, if you are a radio amateur and you can legally make a beacon, like, well, anyone can make a beacon as long as it doesn't transmit, right? You probably have a better idea of where to put it than I do, but I wouldn't leave this anywhere unattended, should we say. You might even not like to make a Morse code beacon, you might like to make something else. And as a matter of fact, uh, having done this, I did learn how to make something else. I made a mini little weather station that lights up depending on what temperature, what the temperature is, it lights up different LEDs, and it lights up different LEDs depending on the humidity. And knowing how to use the Radiohead library, yeah, switch this on. There we are, we get the temperature, humidity. So temperature, humidity. So all of this, it has applications beyond just uh, Morse code. Oh, also the blue light flashes when it's getting a data packet. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we'll have a look inside here. So there's another Arduino. 
it's a good thing these things are cheap because man, I'm, I'm just I just love these little Arduino nanos. And a UH, another UHF module in there. See? So they have more applications applications than just being, you know, some kind of random Morse code thing. If you would like my code, it is a modified I've probably mentioned it before. It was originally written by uh, an amateur fellow KH6XX. It's his code, which is heavily modified, and it's got all these bells and whistles that I've added to it. If you would like it, um, feel free to contact me. Um, just leave a comment. Well, I'll leave it there, guys, because I can feel myself rambling, rambling on. See you later.